What's up developers, I'm that one Unity dev, and today we'll be creating a 2D IK driven spider. So a while ago, I made a 3D spider which I thought was really neat, which got me to thinking, how can I accomplish a similar result, but in 2D? After doing literally one Google search, I actually discovered that Unity has pretty much the exact same animation rigging package that I use, but it's 2D. So with all the hard work done for us, Feel free to follow along, because it might be easier than you think. All we need to get our spider friend up and crawling around is a spider sprite that is compatible with 2D bones, the 2D IK package, some sound effects, and a little bit of code. Before moving forward, some of you may be wondering, what even is IK? Well, to answer your question, IK stands for Inverse Kinematics which is a mathematical process of calculating the variable joint parameters needed to place the end of a kinematic chain. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we have a perfect example right in front of us, your hands. When moving your hands, you don't think about exactly what position your arms are going to end up in. You just move your hands and your brain figures out the rest. IK in this example is your brain. Whenever you move the end of, let's say, the spider's leg, the IK figures out where the rest of the leg should be, relative to where the end point is going. Simple, right? So with that, hopefully, helpful explanation out of the way, let's start on our sprites. Jumping into our drawing application, we'll start with the spider first. If you're familiar with my How to Make an Atmospheric 2D Game series, you know I like to start with basic shapes first, and add small details after. So for the body, I make a circle, and squiggle all the way around it for hair. Once I'm done, I draw a basic leg shape and do the same thing. I make sure they are on a separate layer, because the way we are importing him, it will automatically detect they are separate sprites. After making the first leg, I duplicate it 7 times, since he has 8 legs, and I orient them around the body. I ultimately change their position and scale later on in Unity, because it looks unnatural. Just to make things easier, I suggest you draw in a good neutral pose, closer to what I have in the final product I showed earlier. After I'm satisfied, I export it as a PSB and move on to the ground. As you may have guessed, I start with the basic ground shape and squiggle yet again for the grass detail. Once my squiggles are done, I then draw a tree. Starting with a quick sketch of the trunk and bigger branches, I then fill them in. Once I'm satisfied, I move on to the foliage, which I just fill in with the standard leaf brush. I then add a very subtle gradient and call it done. And that's it for the sprites. After our sprites are made, we can hop over to Unity and create a new URP project. Before we do anything, we should set our view to orthographic and import some packages. The packages you need are the 2D animation package and the PSD importer package. Once those are finished, it's time to import the holy grail, the 2D IK package. If you can't find them, that's because you need to enable preview packages to gain access to it. With the packages installed, we can now import our sprites. To import them, just drag and drop them into the assets folder per usual. The magic happens when you select the sprite editor for the PSB spider. Once you open the sprite editor, you'll immediately notice that the spider's bodies and legs are all separate according to the layers we made earlier, but the icing on the cake really comes in the form of the skinning editor. Here we can see our reassembled spider and can start adding bones to our sprite. To add a bone, click on the create bone button and add your bones from there. I'm going to add two bones for each leg, one for the body and one for the head. After your bones are made, Click the Auto Geometry button. This will automatically generate weights for our newly created bones. Let's drag our spider into the scene. You might notice that it now has a bunch of visible bones. Upon rotating them, you can see the legs and body move with each bone. Although, upon closer inspection, you'll see when I move certain legs, it also moves and morphs the body in an unusual way. This is not what we want. So we'll have to go in and manually remove the body and the other legs from the generated weights. To remove the weights, the simplest way I found was to go into the Bone Influence button and manually remove all the bones except the ones you want to keep. After you remove the unwanted weights, 
Check it out in Unity and make sure it's set up the way you want. I had to move some of the bone start locations to make sure they rotate from the correct pivot point. This is mainly trial and error to get the spider to look the way you want. Now for the fun part, 2D rigging. The first thing I do is restructure the spider in the Unity hierarchy to make things a little bit more organized. This is going to get a little confusing, so I'll go slowly and try and explain it the best I can. In a clockwise motion, rename each leg to leg 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. After that's done, rename the head and body bones to head and body. Finally, unpack the prefab and parent all the legs to the body bone. With everything renamed and parented, I add a new 2D IK Manager component to the body. I then hit the plus icon and create a new limb solver. This is what we're going to be using for the leg IK. I then rename it and create an empty child game object. Just to make things easier, I'll give it an orange diamond icon. I'll rename it to leg one target and reposition it to the bottom of the first leg. After that's done, I assign it under the limb solver as the target. I then go into the leg one bone structure and create another empty game object. I give it a green circle icon and rename it to effector. I then reposition it to the bottom of the first leg and assign it under the leg IK as the effector. And that's it. The leg will now automatically reposition itself to the target. Rinse and repeat those steps for every leg. Depending on how your spider is set up, you may need to click the flip checkbox in the limb solver for legs 5 to 8. With the main part of the IK done, this would be a good time to set our ground up. All I do is drag and drop my ground in and give it a 2D polygon collider. I then create a new ground layer and make sure the ground is set to it. With the legs now moving to the targets, we need a few things to get them to move automatically. First we have to create an empty body target game object for each leg, and attach a new leg mover script. Before we get into the code, I know you may be thinking it's going to be complicated, but trust me, it really isn't. To make it easier to understand, I'll take you through each step. All the leg mover script will do is track and position the limb solver targets so each leg is anchored on the ground. Then it will wait until it gets to a certain distance away and reposition the limb solver target to another position automatically. So, to get started, first we need to unparent the limb solvers from the body bone and create an empty object under the main spider object. I rename it to IK and parent them all to that. This just keeps things organized, and as you can see, I also did the same thing for the sprites. After you're finished, create another empty game object under the body bone. This will hold our body targets. To make the body targets create yet another empty game object, I'll give it a blue circle icon and position it to where the first leg is. Do this for each leg and name them leg 1 body target, leg 2 body target, 3, 4, etc. Once that's done, you can now see that when we move the body bone, the body targets move with it and the limb solver targets are anchored in place. The reason we're using the body targets is because it allows us to calculate the distance between each limb solver target and the body target, and then we can move it when necessary. I go ahead and create the leg mover script and put it on the leg one body target. If Michael Reeves has taught me anything, it's that people hate code, so I'll try and keep this short and to the point. First off, we have a function called check ground, running an update. All this is doing is raycasting downward and snapping the body target to the ground. We also do a distance check between the body target and the limb solver target, and if it's higher than our threshold, the leg will move to a new position. With this script running on all the legs, this is what the result looks like. You might notice in the final result, the leg comes up and slowly moves to the position rather than snapping to it. This is done by using two positions, a halfway point combined with the leg height and the final position like we already have. I then use lerp rather than changing the position, and I do an additional check before moving the leg, to make sure the opposing leg isn't in the air. 
This check creates a zigzag pattern, which is more natural for removing insects. We can also go a step further and add a script on the body, average the heights of each limb solver target, and change the body's Y height to compensate. Okay, okay. I said I'd keep it short. So let's move on from the code and back to the cool stuff. When we were creating the sprite, I mentioned that I readjusted the scale and positioning of my spider. It is after this step that I ended up doing that. With the spider all fixed up, I went ahead and implemented all the techniques used in my How to Make an Atmospheric 2D Game tutorial. For the sound, I added a short tick sound each time a leg gets to the position, as well as some ambient background noise. And with that, the spider is complete. I think it all ties together very well, and as complicated as it may have initially seemed, I hope I shed some light on how it was all done. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and maybe even learned a thing or two. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if you implemented a similar system in your game. We also have a Discord, which for the moment is very small. If you need help, or have a suggestion for a future video, stop on by and we'd love to have you. That's all the time we have for this video. See you next time.